So the organization's list for Google Summer of Code 2023 has just been announced and in this video we are going to cover two very important questions. What is the process of shortlisting organizations? How do you know if you are ready to participate? Now I've gotten a lot of questions like I only know C programming language or I'm in 12th grade, can I participate etc. So we, we are going to cover all these questions in the second part. So Google just released the organization's list for this year. Before going ahead, let's make this one thing very clear. There are several organizations under GSOC and under one organization, there is typically several projects or ideas. Now you are required to send a proposal to one single project. Another interesting tip is that you can be creative and suggest to start a completely new project. And if that is approved, there's a very high chance that they would choose you to build it since you are the one who came up with the whole idea. So coming back to the bigger picture, we're not really shortlisting organizations, to be honest. We're shortlisting projects inside these organizations. When we go on this organization's list online, you're going to find that you can filter this by the technologies used in the organization. For example, if I was applying this year, I would have chosen Flutter since I've worked on it extensively. And here I get a bunch of organizations. I would go to each organization and then go through each organization's idea or project list. Then select a few projects I like and go through their code base on GitHub and really dive deep into them to understand what other technologies they are using. That's pretty much how you shortlist an organization. It's basically based on what technologies you have a good grip on. What I personally feel is if you are starting a month or two before the program start date, you should at least have a strong hold on the core technology of the project. For example, the core technology for my project was Flutter and I had built several applications on it. And even though I had to learn other technologies like Docker, Laravel, and PHP, I managed to do that because I had a strong hold on the core technology of the project. If, for example, I didn't know Flutter, I couldn't have understood the code base and start contributing. All of my time would just go in watching tutorials and getting frustrated with the amount of time it's taking to learn that new technology. That brings me to the second part of the video. How do I know I'm ready? Let me start with a simple prerequisite list. GitHub. This is the whole platform on which most of the open source world relies. I recently made a video explaining the core parts of GitHub in a simple way if you're interested in knowing more about this. Programming language. I mean, do I even have to say this? You need to know a programming language if you're interested in participating in a program which is related to coding, right? Basic development experience. At least one project made by you end to end. The reason I say this is because if you don't know how to use a terminal or use an ID properly, then you are going to have a very hard time in GSOC because this program is not for complete beginners. Even though I had one year of development experience, it still took me one week to just locally run my project. So that's why I suggest that you should have at least one end-to-end -end project and by end-to-end -end, I really mean that you should make something like a full stack application right just don't make one simple front end of a website or just a simple uh, website that much experience in my opinion is not enough another really important thing is the ability to learn fast this is probably the most important skill in GSOC, you will constantly have to work with new technologies you've never heard of. And believe me when I say this, if a CS student has the skill to learn a new technology and come up with a working implementation within a day or two, he isn't a student anymore. He's called a software engineer. I talk about the structure and history of GSOC in this video, and I also have an ongoing open source series if you want to watch that. But good luck on your GSOC journey and see you in the next video.